O'Connor and Frida Reba Dorsey here today on the Bonsai Balcony. It is Saturday. It is a beautiful day. Get that sky looking the right color. There you go. It is a beautiful day in Alameda, California. It's about 70 degrees. I'm hanging out here with my uh, sassy little sidekick, Frida. Come on in here and collect a little per diem there, Frida. And we're going to do a little discuss today. Our last show, a couple of days ago, we were discussing uh, 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 heat and how we cope with uh, the situations that are brought to us in August heat, how we deal with that. And uh, there's an opposite situation that can also occur in the summer, and that's overwatering. Overwatering, it's easier easier than you think you probably can lose a couple of trees maybe a year to underwater you know maybe not underwater you might be on your game but uh overwatering you can have a situation where you go through and you water all your trees and then these guys start taking up x amount of water and sometimes in the summer you come through and you water them twice a day and then, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's say it's spring and we did that. We're going through it's spring and our little trees are waking up and going to town and we're watering all these guys. And they're taking up all the water that we give them. And then we go through and we cut our tops. We go through and we do our, our needle cutting or we cut our buds. And the water usage goes down so when that happens we need to adjust our role also if we have our trees like there's a couple of different stages of trees there and there's a couple of different stages of trees mixed in together there in other words some of those trees got their buds cut and some of them didn't and if one tree that got its buds cut is hanging out next to four or five trees that didn't, it may find itself getting daily overwatered, and you might not be picking up on this because you're watering 10 trees there. So then what happens is that tree starts to yellow. And at that point, also, here's something else that I'm, I think, this is only a, I think, everything else I've said to you so far is known stuff, but I also happen to think sometimes when we cut buds, they may go into shock a little bit. I know perennials can go into shock, and go into shock just means they stop. They stop functioning. They stop functioning for a while, and whatever uh, that lack of function can do to harm them will harm them. Otherwise, when they uh, pick back up, they can pick back up and be okay, right? I had uh, a deal where I set a perennial down about this far from the ground and I dropped it. I thought it was already sitting down and I dropped it from that high. And when I dropped it from that high, every limb, every leaf dropped like the tree just spontaneously wilted. And it took it four days to get over that. I don't know whether it just really dropped the hydraulics out of the plant or whether or not it well and truly went, in, went into some sort of shock. But during that time, the tree completely shut down. And sometimes I think if we're going through and we're cutting the buds on a whole bunch of trees, all of a sudden one of them doesn't do well. I suspect that guy might have went into shock for a few days. And during that time, if you water it, it's not taking it up. It just lays there. So whether that's a part of the process or not, we still see something akin to that whenever we go through and we prune our trees back in spring. All of a sudden, the amount of water that they take back becomes less, and you will adjust to that. If you see that happening to 20 trees at the same time, it's not, not hard to make an adjustment. But you have to be especially mindful because there might be, even amongst that dozen trees, there might be one or two in there who has slowed its roll a little more than the others. 
And failure to recognize that and continue to water that tree the way that you were watering the rest of those others will cause it to continue to yellow. It was a year ago since I lost a little pine tree that was uh, one of our little starlets. To me, it was one of our little starlets. It was one that gave me, I learned a lot from it, and it gave me uh, uh, a lot of confidence about when it came time to bend and fold pine trees, and I named it Franken Pine. And after I did the buds last year, after we did a, um, we did a repot, we did a little bit more of a styling change. Not, not a styling change, but we um, tightened up our wires and stuff on that tree and did a repot. And uh, after we did the candle cut on it, uh, it began to yellow and I started trying to water it less, but it just took what felt like to me too long to take up. I wasn't willing to go that long without any water. And it would just take longer and longer and longer. And it just got yellower and yellower and we lost it. Now, what should have happened, I think, looking back, it, it might be that nothing I could have done would have changed that. It, it might have been that we just lost Frank and Pine and that was that. But it also could have been that a change of position, taking it out of direct light at that time, because it's uh, taking it out of the light and then uh, removing it from the trees that are getting watered at a ratio that is not favorable to it, putting it off to its side so that I will look at it and go, this tree needs water because it's dry. If I look at it and it's over by itself and the substrate is wet, but the tree still looks yellow, I wouldn't water it. But if it's laying there still in with the others, it would get watered because all the rest of them got watered and they're fine, so why isn't it fine? Well, it's not because it's not and you should move the tree out of that situation until it recovers. That's, that's what I figured out may uh, may have been something else I could have done to have saved Frank and Pine. To leave it where I had left it and expect it to pull out on its own might not have been might not have been realistic. In in the in the scheme of things, sometimes you just lose trees. So this but I suspect had I taken it uh, and put it in a situation of less light and uh, also put it in a situation where it wouldn't necessarily get watered multiple times a day the way or once a day every day or sometimes multiple times a day the way the trees around it were getting watered that probably could have made its care a little bit more personalized i'm pulling on these cypress trees you see we're already starting to see some fall colors here the summer temps uh have gotten a lot nicer or a lot of our pine trees are looking really nice and green and, um, but I just wanted to pass along this information. I'm gonna include uh, in this video, I am going to include a, uh, a video from uh, uh, a creator in Japan called Bonsai Agency. And he does a deal where he's going to take out a uh, table in his yard and he's going to show us four or five trees in a row and show you what has happened to these trees and how it was that being watered along with their counterparts caused them caused them that situation. So it'll be an, it'll be a little follow up with with examples to to what I'm showing here. Of course, it's all in Japanese, so you will have to uh, click on subtitles. But the um, the subtitle. English translator is good on that. It works out pretty well. Also, you can subscribe to his newsletters, which are all very easy to translate and are a wealth of uh, pine information. But uh, it was a, it's, it's another video that uh, goes into a, um, this in a little bit more details. And he shows a few examples of what he's talking about as well. Whenever we go back and we start cutting back and and pruning on our trees, they uh, they can change the amount of uptake of water that they need. And if they're in with others and there's one of them falling behind and you don't notice, you can lose that tree if you're not careful. Uh, most of our guys seem to be looking and doing pretty, pretty well tonight. 
we're going to do another uh, tonight. I think we're going to fire back up Saturday night live bonsai. I will bring in a little Japanese black pine, and we are going to. Uh, I'm going to bring in one of our from seed Japanese black pines, and we are going to uh, put one that little guy in a bonsai pot and start its and start its uh, journey in the bonsai vortex. Um, meanwhile, quick look, Ponderosa seems to be loving life. Tomorrow is the first day of September. I have one more, no I don't, October, no, November. In November, I get to remove the green tape off there. I'm really looking forward to November. Kind of excited about that. Uh, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Our next drop will be tonight when we do, uh, when we get around to doing uh, Saturday night, we pick back up Saturday Night Live Bonsai. We're going to repot a, uh, we're going to pot up, not repot, we're going to pot up a little uh, bean, Japanese black pine. And uh, I'm excited about that because that'll be one of our from seed little trees. And that is fun. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Frida, Frida Reba Darcy appreciates you. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. That's our little ditty on summer overwatering.